let's just jump straight in and talk about technology um, because I think that's the first thing that we need to discuss, right? And so what do you say to people say that we are too connected? And I say too in um, quotation marks, um, too yeah, yeah. connected and that we should be disconnected more. You know, my book is called Don't Unplug. So it's, I, I might be a little biased. Uh, <laughs> the reality is, in 2021, 2022, 2030, when you're listening to this, we're more connected than we were the year before. So there's no going back. I believe what we need to talk about when we talk about being disconnected is being autonomous. So when most people say, I need time to be disconnected, I think what they really mean is I need time to be autonomous. I need time to feel like I'm making my own decisions. Okay. And <laughs> oof. 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 I'm thinking Too soon, about right? all the, no, 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 this is good. But what about like, like, the best example is social media, right? Yeah. And with Oof. social media, that seems to be the scapegoat for technology that, you know, with AI, social media, um, the data collection, the privacy rights, you know, that seems to be um, the big concern of our generation, right? Is that, you know, you know, what is happening with social media and is this changing the world in not a good way? Yeah, yeah. So let let me share something with you real quick, Alex. So this is my social media intimacy stack. And basically, when I think about social media and people talking about overly being connected, oftentimes what they really mean is the way that people have access to them feels intrusive. A lot of times when they're talking about privacy. So when I meet with people, whether it's be a friend or a new acquaintance or something like that, you and I are just getting to know each other, I usually send them kind of an overview of how I like to connect. So think of being connected as dating, right? You might have a different way of dating than I do, but for me, dating looks like this. It starts off with let's hang out in some kind of ephemeral app, like a story app or something like that. It moves on to let's talk about maybe the music we listen to, maybe some of our political opinions in real time, maybe what we're doing for work, maybe the people we hang out with, types of people we date, dating circles, maybe how we treat our bodies and ultimately how we treat our genetics. So that hopefully gives you a really good idea of when I think about being overly connected to all these services, I think the services have kind of taken the place of the silos we used to put our physical lives into. But unlike our physical lives, Alex, because you and I are probably over 30, right? I know yep. I am. <laughs> Those physical silos didn't follow us into the digital world. And what people are noticing now is this pulling because they're completely accessible everywhere. And that's different than being too connected. Okay, that's a good point to start with, right? Because the other side of it is that um, because we're soon going to get into like the 700 apps, sensors, technologies, which you use, air tables and all that, right? But I just, but I just wanted to, to really start that conversation quickly because I know that's going to be yeah. the first objection that people have, right? The second part is that when you're connected, uh, that we're going to get to in a minute, um, your data is being stored in somebody else's cloud. Is that right? Like, is that a good phrase? And if so, what do you say to the privacy conversation that people might have around that? Yeah. And again, this is totally legitimate. I think if we go back again to the 80s, I was born in 1968, but if we go back to the 70s, 80s and 90s, our data was stored in a lot of systems back then too. You know, and it took a massive legislation in countries around the world to free up patient medical records, to free up financial records, all these other sorts of things. So I personally don't subscribe any type of digital dualism where like it's different because it's online than it's offline. I do think it seems scarier now because a lot of our data is housed in these corporations that is accessible by other people. When your medical records were locked up at a hospital and your birth certificate was locked up at the court department and your bank statements are locked up at, you know, the bank, it was different. You knew where to go. You knew who to say, who to talk to, and you knew what the document looked like. Okay, mm -hmm. I need this piece of paper. It doesn't feel that way now. And we're generating so much data. So I, I do think so there's a legitimate concern for people to have around the concept of privacy. But often I like to say, do you really mean privacy or do you mean safety? Because if you're talking about safety, I think that's a conversation we can unpack. Privacy as a concept didn't exist before 100 years ago, won't exist in 10 years. So how we function and how we communicate with each other comes back to that word I started with, autonomy. Are you mm -hmm. autonomous in your digital spaces? And I hate to sound nuanced and creepy, but this show is about empowering people not to feel overwhelmed, empowering them to take control of their lives and empowering them to think about what is it I want that's in this digital space that I have in the physical and vice versa. And so just 
Could you just quickly explain what you mean by autonomous? Yeah. <laughs> because it, it can mean you know, many I just things, recent, things, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, and it's weird because I just recently started using that term. I mean, I've used it my whole life, but in, in relationship to technology, I think a lot of people right now don't feel in control of their own lives. I think they don't feel in control of their technology and they don't feel in control of their decision making. Mm. And a lot of that comes from most of the time we're, we're making decisions within technology. The technology is kind of making the decisions for us. And we don't really see it in any type of elegant way. We just know that things are suggested to us, right? You go pick up your phone, right? There is a suggestion. Yeah. I, I like to show people, I have this little chart I drew for uh, an event once. You know, if you think about your decision-making being the black and the uh, artificial intelligence being the red, right now we're at about a 60-40 split with how much information and decision-making we're making, if you actually were to measure it on yourself. You know, your calendar drives a lot, but your calendar sometimes will make suggestions to you. Your phone will tell you to take a break. Your watch will tell you to get up. I mean, everyone from moms to kids to business people are using their devices to kind of drive these turn by turn directions. Mm. But you have to remember when you insert your life into technology, it takes a lot to make sure that some other system doesn't nudge you in another direction. Right. Even your phone will dim if it's too, too dark in a room. So it doesn't blind your eyes. Right. So when I say autonomy, it's weird. I just started using that concept, but I think it's important because I think what we're feeling isn't overly connected, but underly autonomous. Got it. And so um, just to clarify, I just for myself and hopefully the listeners as well. Mm -hmm. So by autonomy, it's like you using the technology for how you want to use it, not letting yeah. the AI algorithms for some other company that is maybe kind of, optimizing on other things that are not what you want. Is that what you mean? That's, like, a, that's a perfect way. I'll give you a really straightforward example. On um, Twitter, you can actually tell Twitter, show me my Twitter feed in chronological order. By default, that's it doesn't do that, right? It shows you to you like what's best, you know, what's the most interesting thing you want. There's no autonomy in that, right? Jack mm. Dorsey's running your life. Yeah. Jack Dorsey's running your attention. Right. Facebook just last week came out with tools to allow you to reorder your news feed because of a lot of things happening in Australia with news and yeah. starts of the world with other parts of the world with misinformation. So autonomy can be as simple as you setting your interface to show you things, or as bold as you saying to your phone, I don't want you to dim, I don't want you to listen. I'm going to put tape on my camera, all these, there's a spectrum of it. But I think the way you put it was probably the most important, easiest to understand. 